Hey, Pear fans. This episode is brought to you by Audible.com. If you like listening to beautiful voices like ours instead of reading words, then head on over to Audible where you get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Truth, where you can choose from over 180,000 titles for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hey, Paratruthers. Justin here. Us at Paratruth Radio just wanted to say Happy Easter to all of our listeners out there, and that we hope that you have a happy and safe one this Easter holiday. And now, on to the show. Christian and non-Christian paranormal investigators. They have two different views, and it seems as if neither of them can ever agree on anything. So what happens when a mainstream view of the paranormal crosses paths with the Christian view? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a brand new episode of Paratruth Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And while you're listening to tonight's show, check out our website at paratruthradio.com where you can learn more about us and what we do. Also, feel free to look into our Patreon account at paratruthradio.com and help us to continue bringing the world fresh, entertaining media each and every week. And by contributing, you'll become an executive producer of an upcoming episode of Paratruth Radio and officially become a part of the Paratruth family, which will include special monthly behind-the-scenes access to our production. Now, folks, the one thing that I do want to just kind of push is if you go to our website, check out the new blog section. Uh, as of last week, there's only one, but I do plan on getting more up. So if you're looking at this t- tonight or a couple days from now, you might see a few more blogs, but uh, the last blog was about the soul harvesting of the gray aliens that we had discussed with uh, Nick Redfern, you know, last week. So go ahead and check that out, you know, and feel free to comment and let us know what you think. Which actually the people at Paranormal Forum started a great conversation about they actually were getting into aliens maybe demons because of the whole soul right. thing. So mm-hmm. it actually was kind of interesting. Uh, and <laughs> somebody had said, well, where can we find more about this topic? And I typed in there, we've got a couple of episodes <laughs> of how we talk about it. And uh, there might be a few more coming up too. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually I was just talking to a friend of mine recently because uh, Justin and I, we have been trying to decide of new uh, shows, topics that we haven't covered over through the past. And so my friend said, you know, how long you get, do you think you'll be able to do this radio show? Cause eventually you're going to just run out of ideas and have to go back over stuff. I was like, well, that's the point. There's mm. so many theories about one topic that we can run over the same topic five, six times. And it'll always be a new show. Right. So uh, you always come across something new and different that you hadn't heard yeah. before. So, you know, it, it's always cool and it's always interesting, but today, we are talking about two very interesting subject. Uh, one is very familiar with everybody, and that's the doomsday prophecies, uh, just in general, any and all doomsday prophe- prophecies. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that, and we're also going to be talking to, about something that is maybe as popular, but not nearly as much as doomsday, and that is the butterfly effect. Most of us probably know of it from the Ashton Kutcher movie. Uh, but the butterfly effect is a real thing, and so we're going to go ahead and discuss that as well. Now Paratruth presents the effect of the butterfly on Doomsday. All right, guys. So butterflies, they're pretty. They flutter funny. They act like they don't know where they're flying. <laughs> they come <laughs> they from worms. Everywhere. <laughs> come from worms. They're weird. It is a weird creature, actually, mm-hmm. when you think about it. Not too many that transform in that particular manner. Yeah. 
But we're not actually talking about butterflies, but instead the butterfly effect. Now, the butterfly effect is basically a concept that small causes can have a large effect. Uh, initially, it was used to predict weather, but later, of course, the term became more of a metaphor and used a lot in and out of science. Uh, but of course, it goes beyond science and moves into the paranormal. Let's go to you, Justin, because I know you've studied the butterfly effect quite a bit here uh, over the last week at least. So what are, what are some things you'd like to discuss here? Well, it's an interesting topic because, I mean, there are a lot of people that believe that um, human consciousness can can cause a cause and effect just by our own thoughts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was originally brought up by Edward Lorenz. And I don't know what these letters mean behind his name, SM43, SCD48. I'm not sure. So if you guys know that, please let me know. Um, but he had come across this chaos theory that, you know, with the butterfly that flaps its wings could cause a tornado somewhere else in the world uh, because of weather being so unpredictable that anything could change weather patterns. And Mm -hmm. in so doing that, he kind of created this theory, this chaos theory that you can kind of apply to a lot of things. And I think the biggest thing here is that, you know, a lot of people claim that if you believe in it, if you think it, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we had actually brought this up once a couple episodes back that actually even in the Bible, Jesus brings up, if you believe it is happening, it will happen. Mm -hmm. Not exactly those terms. You had brought up the verse. I mean, yeah, because I mean, in the case of Jesus, you know, he was saying, whatever you pray to God, if you believe as you pray it, then he'll make it, you know, he'll make it so. Right. But of course there's fine lines everywhere with that. You know, so many people just take it as, Oh, no matter what, he'll answer prayers if I just believe, but that's not always the case. So those are one of those where it's, it can get a little, you know, a little weird. But, uh, you know, it, it's actually interesting because I think, I mean, throughout my life and I think throughout your entire life, even before the butterfly effect became really popular, uh, people have always said that, like, be careful what you do. You know, everything you do has a consequence. Uh, and those consequences are very small, but can ultimately affect you know, future reality. And we don't just see that in normal life or people saying that, but we actually see it a lot in sci-fi films. Uh, when you look at people like time travelers, there's a couple of shows mm-hmm. out right now about time traveling. Um, and of course the flash, one of my favorite DC characters, you know, he time travels. And when he does, it affects the future, the original future, everything changes. And it seems to happen a lot in time traveling films. Mm. Uh, when someone jumps back in the past and makes a little change, like they move a cup or they say hello to somebody that they shouldn't have said hello to, it has a huge consequence, like a huge consequence in the future. Like they become wonder, their own father. Right, exactly. Things like that. And so you have to wonder if that's actually true. Could it be that this right now, this topic, this conversation we're having is going to influence future uh, – is going to influence the future? Mm. You know, is it going to make any type of change? Would the future be different if we didn't have this conversation? You know, right. and obviously there's are things we can't really know. It just can't know, period. You know, you'll never know because you can't jump back in time yet. But or that we've been given the knowledge that we can or can't. <laughs> right. You know, so, I mean, it's difficult, but it's interesting still to see that the concept has always been around. It just is now has a, a word to it. You know, the yeah. butterfly effect has a term. Right. Well, and I mean, he like you had said, he didn't intend this particular theory to apply to anything other than weather. But it's grown so much that it can be. And it's right. um, it's funny that you bring up the whole time travel thing, because that's actually something that I had thought about while researching and thinking about this topic was it kind of goes along those same lines. If you change something about what you do, the effect could be so massive that time and space itself would never be the same again, Mm -hmm. or it could be so minuscule that nobody would ever notice. Right. But, and it's like, um, what I was going to say when you're talking about 
we're told when we're younger, you know, like, w- watch what you wish for. You just might get it. Like right. a lot of people will will say, I hate you. I hate you. I wish you were never my father or mother. And that that's where the whole watch what you wish for thing. But then in and of itself, if you didn't have them as parents. Mm-hmm. You would never be born. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. But you, you know, still though, you know, we think is it possible? You know, can there be change? And there actually is evidence. There's significant evidence that prove that maybe small little fluxes, mm-hmm. whatever they may be, could influence the future in a positive or negative way. Right. One such case, and I'm sure everyone has probably seen this on YouTube or you know Facebook or something, but there's a video about how wolves change rivers. And it's actually a small story about uh, wolves being reintroduced to the greater Yellowstone ecosystem in 1995. Now, in 1995, Yellowstone Park was pretty, pretty just devastated. You know, there, there was, wasn't much grass. Everything was dying. Uh, all the elk and uh, the rabbits and everything were just eating all the, all, all the foliage. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing really left. Um, and so they ended up reintroducing the gray wolf into the area, something that, you know, an animal that wasn't there for many, many years beforehand. Uh, And it took several months. But when the wolves were introduced, they actually ended up eating some of the elk and some of the other uh, animals that would normally eat the greenery. Mm -hmm. Because of it, more greenery began to grow. And when that began to grow, there were new animals that came forth, new plant eaters, which also brought in bears, some more carnivores. And as this happened and the plants began to grow more and the trees began to grow, the rivers actually began to change course and cut new courses into the ground because the water was being forced into the ground to feed the trees. And so we actually see something very small, a pack of wolves, Mm -hmm. change everything from the amount of animals that are there to the greenery and even to the point of changing the river's normal path, uh, which is pretty incredible. And so it's, you know, and so it's cool to see that maybe something just as small, you know, as this is a pack of wolves, something like a small, uh, so small could, oh my gosh, that something so small could have a pretty big consequence or a small consequence, either good or bad. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I don't think a lot of people think about that when they're, mm-hmm. when they're praying or when they're thinking things because, As we were just saying, like, watch what you wish for, you know, um, same thing with prayer. If you're praying about something specific and it doesn't come true, a lot of people say, well, God doesn't answer prayers. Mm -hmm. Well, no, he just just didn't answer that one because it was not the the prayer that should have been granted. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that comes back to the whole God knows best. And, you know, a lot of people have an issue with that because they believe that they know best and should know best. But in reality, and I think that's, that's the point, you know, that's, that's a finite mind compared to an infinite mind. God knows the past, present and future. So he could see what certain things will change your future. Mm -hmm. And that's why he grants or doesn't grant certain, certain wishes, if you will. Um, And we just can't see that. It's too bad. Cause like, I'd love to go into the future and just see what my future is. (laughs) It, It would make, I think it would make things well, I th- it could go either way. You know, it could make things a whole lot easier. It could also make things right. a whole lot more difficult. So, well, and if you were to, like, for example, people that go to psychics and mediums, they want to know their future. But if you know your future, there are going to be areas that you do something different, mm-hmm. even just by accident, that changes that future, and it. I mean, if you knew your future, would would you do you think in your personal opinion, if you saw something in your future and you're like, wow, that's the greatest thing ever. I, I, I'm going to fast track my way to there. Do you think that you would make some mistake that would oh, somehow absolutely. mess that up? Because because I mean, knowing knowing my future, knowing it's something good and then me trying to figure out what it like how to get there could actually have the reverse effect, mm. you know? So it, you really have to just, I mean, at that point, like if, if uh, you knew my future, for example, and I didn't, then you would see that whatever I do would just be random chance, I guess. 
and I would get there. But if you were to tell me and I tried changing something and you could still see my future, you might be like, oh, but well, you just did screwed up everything, you know? <laughs> well, I, I think this kind of goes along the lines of uh, fate versus free will, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, a lot of people believe in fate, but a lot of people believe that there's no such thing as fate. And mm-hmm. then there's people that land in the middle that say, yes, there's fate, but there's 50 different branches to get to that same destination. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if the butterfly effect can, well, I guess it would apply to that because if you chose A, B, C, D, or E, all those other w- choices basically are erased because you chose mm-hmm. one of those paths, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, well, this actually kind of ties into Doomsday Prophecies, and I, I'll get into that a little bit after the break when we get into the doom, the different Doomsday Prophecies and that sort of thing. Um, but it, it's an interesting topic. I mean, there's not a whole lot on it. I wish we could provide more for you guys other than, um, I mean, Eric provided the one piece of evidence that, makes it kind of a well-known thing, but at the same time, a lot of it is all conjecture. We're, we can sit here and spit back and forth, well, what if you do this? What if you do that? But the butterfly effect is a chaos theory, which means nothing affects it. It affects everything else. Yeah. It's it's one of those things you, again, science cannot test. Right. You'd have to know the subject's future before testing their future. So, unfortunately, yeah, it's kind of disappointing because I, I would kind of like to know, you know, have some solid results here. But well, um, I, are you familiar with the um, the show Fringe? Uh, TV show. I, I'm acquainted. Okay, so in the show, they come up with this window to an alternate reality. Mm-hmm. And eventually it becomes a doorway to an alternate reality. But mm-hmm. it almost makes you wonder if somewhere down the road, that's where time travel mm-hmm. is discovered. First, we have a window into the past or future. Then somebody creates a doorway. Mm-hmm. So I'm almost wondering if we're going to have something somewhere in the future, which I honestly don't think is necessarily the safest thing in the world. But we might have a window into the future and I don't think it would be necessarily a good thing because like we just discussed, if for example, say the United States government figures it out and they want to be the ultimate power in the world, Mm -hmm. that changes the, the the balance of the world and who knows what happened. Right. So, all right, folks, that's, um, about all we've got for butterfly effect. I mean, we, there's so much more we could get into on this, but again, it's just going to be speculation and conjecture. So w- what we want to do is get into the doomsday prophecies and tie it all together. But first we're going to go to Eric's random fact of the day, and we will be right back with per- truth radio. Now Eric's random fact of the day. Most of us have candles sitting around in our house. And let's face it, typically we light them and then forget all about them for a couple of hours. However, we might think twice if we knew just how hot they truly burn. Did you know that a candle typically burns at 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit? As if the temperature wasn't enough, the U.S. Fire Administration currently estimates that candles are responsible for approximately 10,000 residential fires each year along with 1,000 civilian injuries, 85 fatalities, and $120 million in property loss. So the next time you light a candle, think twice before leaving it alone. All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And we just got done discussing butter, the butterfly effect. Like I said before the break, there's not a whole lot on it other than a couple of theories. 
Eric brought up one kind of scientific evidence to prove that the butterfly effect is a a good chaos theory about introducing a small pack of wolves into where was it? Uh, into Yellowstone. Into National the Yellowstone Park. National Park. Yeah, um, and that actually kind of uh, has happened in numerous areas, especially with zoos and wildlife reserves and all that different animals being taken out of the wild and things going awry because Mm -hmm. there were no predators or there were no prey or whatever. Right. So going into doomsday prophecies, one thing that came to mind right off the bat, just because of the fact that we have the Christian side is obviously there is a doomsday prophecy in the Bible which is the book of revelations. Mm -hmm. So there's been many more since then. And what are some that you came across that you remember from just actually just from our era? Well, I mean, first and foremost is, which is probably the most prominent to me was obviously Y2K. Mm. Uh, you know, I think the year 2000 was a pretty big deal for a while leading up, you know, um, I, I still have a T-shirt from when I was down in Carolina Beach, and it says 1999, last year of the century. But many people thought it was the last year forever. Yeah. Um, Which is so kind know, of funny when you think about it, because mm-hmm. all it was really about was computers. Right. <laughs> but what was scary is that people thought that the computers would jack up everyone's credit, that the computers would fail and airplanes would just fall from mm-hmm. the sky because there are no computers running them. You know, things like that. And so you you, you can... I mean, for us, people like you and me at the time didn't care. It didn't matter. Right. We, we, we had kids. some we had somewhat interaction yeah. with computers, but nothing compared to what we have today. Right. You know, and so like the thought of losing a computer isn't a, as big of a deal. But the thought of losing like your finances and stuff like that getting mm. all screwed up. Well, that's, you know, much different. Um, but of course, there were some small things here and there where people would say that the world would basically just blow up or become so corrupt from the glitches that everyone would turn against each other and made it kind of scary at the time. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it, it's interesting because the reason, the reason being is that back before the year 2000, many of the computer codes were, that were first written, uh, the dates were abbreviated in order to save memory. So for example, 1998 would simply be written as 98. Mm. Hence, Windows 98, right, I was say, probably Windows one of those popular, you know. <laughs> Windows 95. Um, yeah. And so the system worked just fine until 2000 when the code changed to 00. And they thought that that would basically threaten uh, – the. They, they thought that that would basically cause inaccurate calculations. Um, because technically and, speaking, we would be back to 1900 by computer standards. Exactly. Uh, and it's inter- what's interesting about it, though, is despite the fact that, like, you know, airplanes didn't fall from the sky and elevators didn't plummet <laughs> from the tallest towers, the skyscrapers, uh, there did happen to be a few issues here and there uh, revol- regarding computers. And in fact, some computers did actually manage to disrupt some credit card terminals in Britain uh and sent out some bills that were supposedly due in 1900. So there were some things that happened. Uh one thing that did happen personally is our computer in the basement, uh, my parents' computer, that was a computer that was probably from 1992 or something. The moment the year changed at 12 a.m. 2000, it died. Would not cut out anymore. Nope. You plug it in, there was nothing. It was just fried. So Wow. Some computers did actually end up failing. Um, computers that weren't updated with proper software. Exactly. Things like that. So, you know, it, it was one of those. It was pretty, it's pretty much like any other uh, doomsday prophecy, except for this one actually had some kind of evidence to support it and actually happened. So, right. Like this is one that is the most realistic I yeah like you're saying mm-hmm. because it was a physical thing that can happen but I think actually a lot of good came out of it because it brought awareness to computer uh software engineers to say hey we need to change something before this happens and a lot of people a lot of engineers were skeptical but there were a few that were like no this is already fixed 
we will be fine. Right. People, please stop freaking out about this. And, and people, and because of it, people did have to go in and fix it. And the fact is that the U.S. government and some American corporations actually spent a total of $108.8 billion in order to try to fix this before anything bad could happen. So whether or not they were successful, we don't know. Because for all we know, maybe nothing would have happened anyway. Right. So who knows? Right. Well, but just from the case of your guys' com- computer specifically, obviously something oh, yeah. might have happened. Yeah. There's obviously something going on, but it the, the, the point is – that it wasn't nearly as judgmental as many thought it would be. Right, right. Well, one that struck me was doing the research. I remember this very vividly was the Heaven's Gate cult in 1997. Um, it was on March, actually, Matt's birthday, March 26, 1997. San Diego police were called to a rented mansion in the upscale community of Rancho Santa Fe, California, to investigate reports of a possible death. When they got there, they were they made a very horrifying discovery. Each uh, a bunch of bodies, each lying in a bunker, dressed in identical black shirts and sweatpants, and wearing brand new black and white Nike tennis shoes. Mm-hmm. And there was 39 total in a mass suicide pact, uh, actually brought about by a new age guru, Marshall Applewhite, uh, that said that the planet Earth was about to be recycled and that the only chance to survive was to leave it immediately in the spaceship that rode in the tail of the then recently discovered Haley Bob comet. Mm-hmm. And. As soon as I read through this at in 1997, obviously I had no idea about this, but after reading this, it reminded me of Scientology because in Scientology, they believe that we are. And I I apologize to any Scientologists out there because I don't know your religion, but I believe we are de evolved aliens and once we die, we are beamed up back to the mothership. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's weird. But this particular I, doomsday thing kind of reminds me of that because that's yeah. what this guy was saying is you were going to be beamed on to this ship by, by taking this elixir, quote-unquote elixir, um, that was riding in the wake of the Halley's Comet. (laughs) Very odd, but it was a doomsday prophecy. Yeah. Well, let me just put, this is funny to me. It might be funny to you. It's a little (laughs) funny to me, considering how often we have brought it up in the past. But isn't it a little ironic that this whole thing started in November 14th of 1996 when, uh, what is his name, Marshall? When Marshall Applewhite, was listening to Art Bell's Coast to Coast. That I mean, a little ironic, yeah. right? Uh, and actually, it, I mean, he always this guy had this theory, right? As Zappa White dude had this theory, but it wasn't until he listened to this particular episode in which an amateur astronomer called in and claimed to have photographed the mysterious object, aka a spaceship, hiding in the tail of Haley's of Haley Bob's comet. Or yeah, it's just weird. You know, yeah. it's it's like, oh, this amateur guy claimed to have a photo, but I don't see the photo. But, hey, <laughs> we're going to go kill ourselves now. Well, and Which, it almost makes you wonder if Art Bell even got this guy on at all, like uh, the Marshall Applewhite. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't know. I don't remember. I wasn't listening yeah. to Coast to Coast back then. But I mean, I don't know. I, doubt, I, th- I think this guy was even too much for Art. <laughs> I mean, this guy's just, yeah, you know, I mean, they killed themselves with a cocktail of vodka and barbiturates. And others smothered themselves with plastic bags. Now, I mean, okay, I can't possibly fathom it myself, but the idea of suffocating yourself with the plastic mm. bags. But then again, I mean, it's disturbing, guys, but people slit their own throats. You know, that's – let's change subject. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> watching it on movies, I can't do it. I'm like, oh, God. Just get the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, moving on. <laughs> What's your next one? All right. So the sun becomes a red giant. This is another popular one. 
of course, a lot of the, the it's believed that it won't happen for a very long time. Seven point mm. six billion years from now. So the idea here is that the sun will become a giant red planet. Oh my god! <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the idea here is that the sun will become a giant red star and basically expand to the size about 20% greater than that of Earth's orbit and shine 3,000 times brighter than it currently does. And of course, once this happens, the sun will then collapse into a white dwarf. And a white dwarf is pretty much the hottest star in existence. Um, And one step away from a black hole. Exactly. And we we already have one black hole in the center of our galaxy. We don't really need to. So right. hopefully, you know, I mean, honestly, at that point, 7.6 billion years from now, from now I'm not going to care. Right. But, <laughs> you know. Well, who's to say at that point the the universe wouldn't have already collapsed on itself and then re-expanded again? Who knows? You know, I mean, yeah, who the heck knows? Um, but, yeah, most scholars do agree it's going to happen around 7.6 billion years from now. Um and that the sun will enter its red giant phase after it had converted all of its hydrogen into helium. Um, it, guys, this is kind of off subject. Not really, but it's just off topic a bit. But if you guys haven't done any of your own research into the sun and just stars and planets, stuff like that, there's some really cool stuff out there. I know not every one of you listening believes in the scientific evidence to support uh, certain cases regarding you know, Mercury and Mars and this and that, but – Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Probably some of my favorite things to read about. Yeah, it's um, actually really interesting to see that just the development that a star will go through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but of course, there is like this I there, there's this one little glimmer of hope during this because it, it's somewhat believed by by some scientists that uh, whether this particular process of the sun becoming a white dwarf red giant and then white dwarf will actually destroy the planet uh is up to debate some people believe that if the earth were to stay in its current orbit it would undoubtedly be engulfed and completely vaporized Mm. by the sun however some believe that as as the sun uh swells it will lose mass meaning that the earth will drift away from it and perhaps escape a complete destruction. Now, of course, for all we know, that means it'll just drift away and get really cold and then everyone <laughs> will die anyway. But apparently scientists haven't thought that one through yet. But I did. Well, and it almost makes sense that if the star is getting b- bigger, it would mean that that gr- gravitational pull would be shifted in some way and everything else, you know, the entire planetary system would expand with it but Mm -hmm. it also makes sense that it would be possibility that we would just be burned to smithereens too yeah so the fact is that our solar system is really completely held together by our sun if our sun didn't exist or wasn't the right size as it is now then our solar system could very well just be destroyed Mm -hmm. you know everything will drift away from each other bump into each other and of course uh you know, planets like Jupiter and uh, Saturn, they, they do have their own magnetic fields just as Earth and therefore can create their own uh, push and pull, which is what keeps them in balance. But it all connects to the sun, you know. Right. Right. Well, that kind of brings us into another doomsday prophecy it is uh, a prof- or a uh, theory called the Jupiter effect Two professional astrophysicists. John Gribben and Stephen Plagman, uh, that had said that the planets would align, a rare alignment would happen with the nine planets. And in 1980, in 1982, would create a combined gravitational pull that would place huge stresses on the, our planet's tectonic plates, causing killer earthquakes and ever um, severe changes in the Earth's cl- climate. And they wrote a book about this called The Jupiter Effect. And it kind of ties into what Eric was talking about. And it is kind of one that has been prophesied a couple times because a lot of people have talked about the alignment of the planets 
and how that would affect specifically Earth. But I would think all the planets would have some type of issues if a certain alignment came into play where everything was being pulled on all of their gravitational pulls. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. So, and it, uh, at the end of this little, uh, snippet uh, for the, the book, it says, while the Jupiter effect proved to be a bust, however, it was one of the first popular doomsday scenarios, which held nature responsible for the end rather than God's wrath, for which I'm sure the almighty was mightily pleased. <laughs> 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 which i honestly don't think god would really care about our doomsday prophecies because <laughs> none of them are coming true <laughs> <Right>. exactly <laughs> oh goodness but uh we do have one final uh doomsday prophecy that we wanted to bring up and eric mm-hmm. go ahead with that and it is probably the second most popular doomsday prophecy ever. And that is of course the mind calendar 2012. Mm -hmm. One that we have talked about several times actually. Yeah. We we've covered this a few times, but uh, you know, the thought here, basically the mind calendar uh, had a cycle of only about 5,125 years. And the last cycle ended on December 21st, 2012 which simply gave many uh, doomsday sayers the belief that, of course, the world is going to end. Now, this is what I don't understand, first and foremost. It's how people can believe other people really know the end times when they themselves can't figure out the end times. It's just, yeah. I mean, yeah, I know, I, I know. There, that's a big discussion there, and people, <laughs> I know. And I know what you're at thinking, guys, regarding my biblical beliefs about the end times. So. <laughs> Anybody that is not a Bible-based believer. <laughs> um, one thing that had always come up in my mind was, I mean, yes, to an extent, I believed a lot of these people's theories. Um, but, you know, a lot of things that came to mind was a the Mayan were nearly wiped out by the Spanish mm-hmm. Inquisition. Mm-hmm. So obviously they wouldn't have been able to redo a new uh, calendar because mm-hmm. there was nobody to do it. Yeah. Secondly, just like our calendars, don't you think it would have just re-upped at the end of the, <laughs> the calendar, whatever year, I guess you could call it? Because right. our, cal- our calendar months are the same every year and it just always flips. So, right. And, and mind you, we have computers now to really do all this. You know, we don't sit there and write out the calendars ourselves. Right. You know? right. Computers do it for us and the computers are established for many, many, many years. Look, I've checked. We're at least <laughs> up to 2065. Oh, you know, really? and I know it goes way beyond that. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, on top of it, December 21st, 2012, if the Mayan civilization was still around, and I know there are some people out there who say they are Mayans, and uh, I believe that maybe there are some people who are, mm. have ancestors that were of the Mayan right. uh, civilization. Civilization, But the actual civilization itself, in which lived in the pyramids, ceases to exist any longer. Right, Collapsed, um, yep. And December 21st, 2012 would have been a big celebratory time for them. You know, It wasn't a, an idea of like, oh, the world's going to end, but instead, hey, it's the it's the end of the cycle, you know, 5,125 years. Then we move on to the next. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to bring up real quick before I, uh, there's a couple of things I want to say here, but, uh, you said that they were, uh, basically demolished by the, by the Spanish Inquisition. And there, there's, there's actually two beliefs. And I think they coincide with each other because I think that was one. And the other was if you actually go to any of the Mayan sites, and step, stand up on top. You'll notice mm-hmm. that there's no water around. There's no oh. rivers. There's no lakes. Nothing like that. Uh, they built all of their pyramids in a place that just is simply trees. No water. Uh, now, interestingly, there are caverns. Thousands of mm-hmm. miles of the caverns under the ground, which do contain water. Except that for these caverns, the mines believed that it was the entrance to, to the, the underworld. underworld. Yep. And they would often go in... Uh, uh, commit, you know, do rituals and, um, commit sacrifices to the gods of the underworld. 
Uh, and there's a belief that at one point, and it's actually been, I think, scientifically proven that at one point during, uh, the, the years of the Mayans, that there was a huge drought right before they disappeared. Uh, and that drought very well could have been part of the cause as well. With no water and no, no drinking water, basically, no plants to grow, you know, if no food, obviously you're going to end up dead. Well, I've heard uh, theories that it's actually a mixture of both the Spanish. Well, yeah, that's and what then, I'm saying. Yeah. I think it was, a, it was a mixture of both. Yeah. Um, and like some will say it's one or the other, but I think many people, uh, you, me, I think Josh Gates, mm. you know, Josh Gates, <laughs> all believe that it was, you know, a combination of the two. Uh, but back to the actual doomsday prophecy, you know, there, there were a couple of beliefs as to what would happen on mm. December 21st, 2012. And I know for a while, you and I were even like, we've covered this a lot Mm -hmm. leading up to 2012. And we had a bunch of different views. We had a bunch of different people come on and talk about it. And in the end, it was like, actually, I don't even think you and I were even doing a show together at that point Mm -hmm. anymore. We had our own shows. For December 21st, 2012? Yeah. I don't think either of us were actually even doing a show anymore. I I can't even remember. But, uh, you know, I, I do remember that. December 22nd, 2012, I woke up and said, well, golly gee, we were right. (laughs) It was false. (laughs) Um, Because there was actually a specific time as well at at which this was going to happen. And I think it was like 11 something at night or something like that for us. Yeah. Um, But, you know, people believe that there were a couple of things that could have happened. Some believe that maybe there'd be a large meteor that hit the Earth uh, or a mysterious planet known as Nibiru or uh, Planet X or Aries would end up hitting the earth, which, you know, that's another topic for another day, uh, which we've discussed a little bit here and there. Uh, which some actually a lot of people are saying uh, once again that it's going to happen. Right. But, um, and, and then, of course, probably one of the biggest theories was the idea that maybe the earth's magnetic poles would reverse and mm-hmm. therefore cause the planet's rotation to reverse, causing a tremendous uh, tidal waves and earthquakes and things like that. Leading to and another if, ice age, I believe. is leading, what Yeah, leading to another ice age. And of course, none of that happened. And interestingly enough, scientists have stated uh, that basically if the magnetic poles were to shift, there'd be no consequence to Earth whatsoever. It happens every 400,000 years, and it basically would not cause the Earth to try to change rotation. It wouldn't slow down the Earth. It wouldn't speed up the Earth, nothing like that. So for future reference, folks, it wouldn't harm us. <laughs> you got my word. If it does, you know. Eric you, said, Eric said, it's scientific yeah. proof. The truth is, though, if it happens, none of us are going to be around. So you can just blame me in your deathbed, I guess, <laughs> yeah. or in the grave. You'd already be there. So, but <laughs> regardless. Now I've got an uh, image of us in heaven and everybody running up to you be like, you said it was going to happen. And I'm like, this is supposed to be a happy place. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) anyway, so folks, that was our doomsday prophecies. Now, mind you, there are many, many, many more out there. Uh, This planet X one, for example, Mm. you know, big, very popular these days. Uh, There's going to be plenty more in the future uh well there's something that i have that kind of ties butterfly effect to doomsday prophecy and it might be true might not be true might even blow a couple people's minds but what if mind you Mm -hmm. that just by bringing up these doomsday prophecies is why they never came to fruition which it would come into effect, the butterfly effect, that people thought, hey, this is not going to happen, and changed what was going to happen. What are your thoughts on that? You know, it's hard to say because, I mean, most of the time that we've been researching uh, doomsday prophecies, we've been in the paranormal community. Mm. And the paranormal community, no offense, guys, is usually very strong believers in the end times. And everyone we've ever had on to talk about them actually believed it was going to happen. So, you know, from my perspective, I think, well, it was like 50 50, you know. Well, yeah, vice versa. Either this, yeah. 50% believe that. So at what point, you know, where's the balance there? You know, because it could have happened then as well. It could have gone either way. Um, 
But just bringing awareness to it, well, saying yes or no it was going to happen, could have shifted everything completely, which made it didn't happen. Could have. I mean, it could have. One day... <laughs> yeah, one People day we'll still know. not have a scientific explanation for this, so we'll be in the same seat. <laughs> yeah, with the same discussion. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it it was something that I actually thought about today, just before doing the show. I'm like, you know, all these doomsday prophecies. What if the butterfly effect affected the doomsday prophecies? And hey. it it's the fact that we either talked about it, knew about it, or had just brought it up that changed Mm. the whole course of what would have happened. Right. So, and that is, that is definitely very possible. All right, guys, a lot of doomsday stuff (laughs) and I need to rack my mind about it all. So we're going to go ahead and jump. So we're going to go ahead and jump to Justin's paranormal headlines. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. And now now, parachute radios, Radios, paranormal paranormal headlines. 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 How's it going, paratruthers? Justin here with your paranormal headlines, and these headlines are from unexplainedmysteries.com. Tallest men trace back to mammoth hunters. A new study has linked a prehistoric population of mammoth hunters with some of today's tallest people. Men from countries such as Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Netherlands, and Croatia are on average much taller than most other people. A trait that researchers have now traced back to the upper Paleolithic Gravation culture, which existed between 50,000 and 10,000 years ago. The remains of Gravation men have suggested that these prehistoric hunters grew to around 6 feet, which, while not particularly tall by today's standards, was incredible for this time period. It is thought that a combination of lifestyle factors and nutrition gave rise to their impressive stature. The Gravesian is the most important prehistoric culture of the Upper Paleolithic Europe and is sometimes called the Culture of Mammoth Hunters, said study lead author Pavel Grasgruber. I suspect that this big game specialization is associated with a surplus of high quality proteins and low population density created environmental conditions leading to the selection of exceptionally tall males. And this has been Justin with your Paranormal Headlines. This was a segment of Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And if you're just tuning in, you've missed the entire show. So rewind and press play again, and good luck. Maybe you I hope you didn't time. have it on mute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we are wrapping up to the, the end of the show here, so uh, we're going to throw it over to Justin. He's got a few announcements for you guys, as usual. All right, next week, folks, we are going to be talking to J.C. Johnson, and he is the self-proclaimed Indiana Jones of the cryptos- cryptozoology world. Um, heard him on a couple of different podcasts, so I think he's going to be very interesting for you guys, very thought-provoking, if you will. And uh, one thing I wanted to encourage all you guys to do is check out paratruthradio.com. And check out our Patreon account. Uh, we do have a, a couple donators right now. We would love to get some more. And, uh, you know, somewhere down the road, once we start getting more patrons on there, we will be able to offer more perks. Uh, right now, it's just behind the scenes footage uh, where actually Eric and I are working on the first video for our uh, donate donators for the month of April. So I want you guys to at least check it out and uh, maybe somewhere down the road, we can do more tiers. Maybe and uh, a perk would be 
you guys suggest a specific topic and we have to do it because you suggested it, or you could be a uh, special guest on a episode, but you would also be a special a uh, executive producer of the show. Um, but for right now, I mean, it's not gaining a whole lot of popularity. We want to get to that point, so we want you guys to go ahead and check that out. Also, check out our friends at radioandpodcast.com, fringeradionetwork.com, and paranormalforum.net. So that's all I've got for you guys for the special announcements. All right. Well, thank you, Justin, for those announcements. It's been a pleasure as always. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end of the show here. So thank you for joining us. We encourage you, if you haven't done so, check out our website at paratruthradio.com. Any comments, questions, etc., feel free to email us at paratruthradio at gmail.com or on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Social media. Just say social, the social media. media. <laughs> yeah, all the social media stuff. And, and, of course, if you guys, for whatever reason, just missed everything I just said, stay tuned. It'll play again at the end. Uh, with that said, have a wonderful night. Or day, depending on when you're listening to this. My name is Eric. I'm Justin. Peace. If you enjoyed this episode of Paratruth Radio and you would like to listen to it again or are interested in listening to any of our past episodes, then you can find them at Stitcher, Blueberry, TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and the Fringe Radio Network. Or for a one-time fix of all of your Paratruth needs, simply drop in to paratruthradio.com. And of course, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram for brand new updates on our show every day. Finally, we love bringing you fresh, entertaining media each and every week, but we can't do it without you. So please check out our Patreon account. Simply go to ParatroopRadio.com, click on the Patreon logo, and help us to continue bringing you the latest and greatest in paranormal research.